My slam after that was at Poetry Africa. Depression lives and hides, and every poem I write, I have seen her try to creep and slam. So, slam champion, rapper, <laughs> dynamite. Yes! Uh, you started 2016, you were champion. Uh, I preluded. 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 Yes. 2016. And then you went to slam. And then I came and slammed, came out in the semi finals. And tonight. then came back in 2018. And then tonight, headline. Your mom is in My the mom place. is here. Yeah. How does it all feel? I think I'm going to wake up and somebody's going to tell me you dreamt it all. Yeah. You know, that's what it feels like. But it's such, it literally feels like ecstasy. I feel like I'm on drugs and just enjoying the high so much. But it's, it's been such an amazing journey. I'm so glad my mom is here because yeah. she's my everything. And it was a chance. Tonight was a night of truths, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And I witnessed her mm. in all your poems. She yeah. was very present. Present in, in all of them because she's been with me on this journey, you know. So, yeah, having her tonight was very important. I think I wouldn't have done in the way I did if she wasn't in the crowd today. Absolutely. It's also quite rare for us to have such a support system as poets. It's such a, a difficult mm. um, career. Yeah. I call it a career. Yes. It's such a difficult career to, to support because you're not really sure mm. what's happening. Mm. Has she been consistent throughout the years? My mom. Interesting enough, there are two of us at home who are artists. Yeah. And I mean, and must be tough. yes, <laughs> as a, like she's a single parent, so it's always like, yo, these two artists, when are they just gonna get it together? But I guess in the beginning, it was a bit of a challenge for her as a parent. She was just worried, you know, whether we are taking the right path and whether it will all work out. But she started to believe, eh? She became a believer, and she's been a believer ever since. She supports me in everything, like from transport money to get to events, from yeah. dressing me sometimes, yeah. to you know just being there, like tonight as a support system. And I think that's just, really beautiful. Yeah. Um, so you came out of nowhere mm. because I've been fighting the good fight <laughs> and looking for female poets in Durban, and out of nowhere mm. you became champ. Where have you been? I've been around. Yeah. I have been around, but because I live very far from um, where all the events happen. Mm. It's been very difficult in the past to travel to and from events. Also because I'm the only girl at home. Oh, yeah. So my mom has that very protective thing on me. Like you can't just go to any event. I need to know who you're going to be with. If you're sleeping out, who are you going to be with? You know? So it was a very, almost like a, a war I had to fight to be like, listen, this is what I need to do. And I can't be at home and doing it. The people need to see yeah. and hear me because they need me as much as I need them. And I guess that's where I came from. <laughs> that's where I've been hiding. Yeah. Is is the is the culture um, of writing uh, and you're a rapper mm. as well? Is the culture very active in Berlin? I think the culture is very active in Berlin. It's just we have a disconnect, right. which is something I feel like we have as artists in Durban as a whole. It's something that we've been struggling to fix for a very very long time. So we have the same issue there on the north coast. And I feel like in terms of like rapping, the rappers are very together, but building like a stable poetry platform is still something that we're struggling with. When I started going to poetry sessions, I never even went to one close to home because we never had one. I would travel to Phoenix every Saturday on foot with my gang of people. We would walk to and from a poetry session held by Bullet Man. Yeah, hosted by Bullet Man. Yeah. That's where I was heading to because I've been hearing a lot of um, umpogo, mm -hmm. the style of writing mm -hmm. in some of your poems. Mm -hmm. Are you inspired by some of his work? I'm inspired by a lot of his work. Yeah. Those umpogo, heavyweights, bullet men, um, those three people are people that I met in my very young age, still writing and reciting from the sure, page. Sure. People that found me and were like, you know, not necessarily took me and were like, hey, we're going to mentor you. But people that I learned from unconsciously. So they've really been big, um, like, inspirations to me. Also because I rap. And it's so hard to bridge the gap sometimes. I can be writing a poem and the rhythm is just like, buzz, you know, you yeah. know? So yeah. I get it. I get there. Very powerful mm. writers, mm. Uh, activists. Mm. Paul Noble is a giant, he's a flame. Amazing. Um, but apart from his work and you being inspired by what 
what inspires you to keep going because mm. some of the topics especially the topics that you touched on tonight mm. are very difficult topics to speak about mm. how do you how do you get to that point how do you <coughs> what inspires you to keep going before i answer that question let me also say that you are also an inspiration to me like from the first time i saw it, I was like that girl that's the one. She is definitely the one. But I think what, what inspires me to write about all these things, like I said tonight on stage, I am a black female. And there's nothing I can do about it to change it. And I'm in the best position to document about these things. I am also half Zambian, half Siswati, half colored. So I have all these struggles. Yes, I have all these struggles that I've been through. Not being colored enough, not being black enough, not being Zambian enough, because there's also you get tribalism and then there's colorism. So I've been through all of those things. And then I'm woman on top of that, so I've been through all of these things. And these are conversations that we have to have. It doesn't matter who gets uncomfortable Absolutely. in the room, Absolutely. you know. And I feel like uh, being part this, part that, part gives you like an array of um, heritage, mm -hmm. you know. There's, there's, there's power in that yes. and as an artist you are able to unravel all of that and so it is something beautiful. Definitely, it's such a beautiful thing because I myself, I'm st I still discover myself every day because there are stories now, like my dad is not yeah. in the picture so mom is filling in the blanks, you know, every time the little pieces of the stories that come out and which side of my family is the Zambians and which side are the Siswatis and which side is the Kalit. So it's all a journey of discovery and I keep writing about it as I go, you know, just keep writing. But I think one thing I've <coughs> learned as a writer myself and as a poet, you never stop discovering mm. yourself. It never stops. Uh, and as you grow older, everything becomes more clear mm. to you that mm. you don't actually need to fill in the gaps. You just need to appreciate yes. what's there. And we learn to put that mm. in our work as well. Um, so went from prelude to winning slam to headlining, what's next? Honestly, Poetry Africa is all I've been thinking about <laughs> since July. Like, when they called, from the moment they called, my yeah. whole life like revolved around Poetry imagine. Africa. Yeah. And I never really planned anything for afterwards, but what the one thing that was in the pipelines before Poetry, came, uh, Poetry Africa came up is to be published next year. It's something that I'm really working towards because, yeah, um, it's a series of short stories, just five short stories, and it's a becoming of age book. It's just, um, it's titled The Secrets Between Her Thighs. So, yeah, it's Ooh, for every that's, woman. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just intrigue the people, let them think about it, ponder on it. And it's five short stories. It's just about me, my journey, basically, yeah, right. to how I have arrived to my present. And as a young black female writer who has made it onto poetry, which is, I think, is a dream for most. Um, I'm 23. I'm 23. 23 years old. You made it. Um, what would you say to other aspiring poets, writers who want to be famous people? What would you say is the thing to do if you want to get onto this platform? onto this platform? I would think like every number one, everybody's journey is different. Firstly, like. Um, when I first heard about Poetry Africa, I was like so crazy. I told myself, hey, the first thing I would do with Poetry Africa is headline. I was like 19 at the time, yeah. you know, fresh on the poetry scene. I'm like, wow, okay, now I realize I was in over my head. But it's not a bad thing to dream, right. you know. So the only thing I can say is, number one, believe, believe, believe in yourself. Because people will try to tell you that you're not good enough, you're writing, you're not good ready. enough, you're not ready, you're too young. Yeah. Just keep believing in yourself. Number two, work. Yes. No matter how tough it gets, because I've been there, like with the whole depression thing, yeah. being in a state of where I don't want to write, I don't want to perform, I don't want to do anything. But literally I had to pick myself up and say, the only way you can see results is by putting in the work. So I did a lot of work, like a lot of work between last year and this year to get to where I am. And it's so glad. I'm so happy to see it pay off. It still feels so surreal, you know? We are, we are so glad mm. that it paid off. Mm. Um, I think I've been I've been fighting this having female performers come up 
I've been fighting it for the longest mm. time, and I'm still fighting it. Mm. But I'm so glad that the female poets that are coming up are black female writers mm. that are very powerful, mm. that are not afraid of speaking their minds, and are unapologetic about what yes. they say on yeah. these platforms that we get. Thank you so much for being you. Thank you so much for writing. Thank you so much for sharing this stuff with us. We look forward to the short stories and more other publications to come. We're so glad that you got the chance to be on this platform. And don't stop. Thank you. Don't stop. I'm going to take all these blessings from you. You should. You yeah. should. Do you know the magic words? Uh, yeah. What are I, they? I think uh, <laughs> joint something, something, something. <laughs> 2J1. 2J1. That's the one. 2J1. That's so much for thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Love you so much. After that was at Poetry Africa. Depression lives and hides in every poem I write. I have seen her try to creep and slide into my rhymes, but I will never have the satisfaction of stealing my shine. She lives life on the edge, one suicide at a time, and she comes at a cost of which many are prepared to pay.